So there's a fatal flaw here, and that's that the two guys on the left and right don't actually see far enough. Because they're, you know, they're blind, I guess. You can kill this guy. And this guy. That was actually a bit tricky otherwise. <laughs> but, you know, if, if they'd only been standing a little bit closer, it wouldn't have been that easy. Got it. One of the favorite things to look at when you like the graphics of stuff is stuff like the flag. It looks like the edges of it, like, sort of... I don't know, it's really nice. It looks really good. I swear this... I've been in an exact area like this. That looks exactly the same. Maybe not. There's more climbing time. These little red marks is basically to tell you, hey, you're, you're shifting planes now. As usual, it's just patience. The rope dart thing, I think, is one of the coolest things in the game is that and the shoe blade are the only real things that feel new. Are like interesting enough to make it, you know, cool. That was a bit of an annoying miss. I hate it when I like I start slashing in midair and nothing's there. So here's the first Mongol guy, the Mongolian scout. Um, it's there with the master guy. And I need to wait for them to both be blind, which happens when they talk. Now I can sneak up here. And then you can kill them in either order, honestly, but I found it easier to kill the master guy first. And you just rush in and kill the other guy as soon as you can. The first out of four. Like I mentioned, I end up only killing three. But, uh... I did find the four at one point. Before I had to restart the board. This bridge can be a little bit annoying. Because he keeps looking down, but again, you just have to be patient and wait for the time. You can sort of climb from the side of those boards. Which, by the way, why, why are there boards there? I do feel like half this place is designed so that I should be able to climb on it. But, you know, it's, I've never been one for realism. See, that I was quite close there. I almost touched the uh, feet. But now it's easy enough. I'll just wait for him to come close and stab his stab. I gotta stay to the left, though, because, yeah... The other guy can turn, rope dart, and then you can just run. Technically, the um, bridges are supposed to be loud, but it doesn't seem to matter much. Um, there's a Mongolian down there, as we can see on the map. This one's also a little bit awkward, but again, you need to... Look at the corner of you and try to figure out. If nothing else, you can just always go with that noise start. It's pretty crazy good. So, they're talking. The guy turns around so we can drop. Because they're blind. The key here is to quickly toss him into the darkness. You see, like, for a split second, he actually looked at me. And I was in his cone of view. But it didn't matter. And that's two. So now you can either go this way, or you can climb all the way up to the top to um, sink the map. And while I already pretty much picked up most of the shards and stuff the first time I went through, it's still always a good idea, I think. Plus, it looks cool and sounds cool. The eagle jumps thing have been a favorite thing of mine in Assassin's Creed games since the very first one. Just double checking so I've missed anything and I haven't.
Now we get to pretend we're firemen by sliding down the pole. Remember this area being quite difficult actually. Um, in fact, being seen here ends up actually helping me quite a lot because it brings him closer. Otherwise he kept walking really nearby and now it's easy enough to wait until he turns and I get a really easy kill on him. Normally that was a real pain in the ass. Now I just need to wait for him to turn and go to the um... Well, again he sees me but it turns out to be really handy. Normally I was gonna do the whole dash between hiding spots and kill him. I didn't quite dare wait the entire time there. Although I honestly could have probably. But it's easier this way. Because now he turns. Rope dart kill. Slide kill. And then the first one. Or second one? I think second one. Oh, who raised the bridge? This bridge is another area I had a lot of problems with originally. Because they're just... Okay. And then now he sees me? Which obviously, not so good. But he didn't see me. He's, he's like a corpse. But then they just ignore it. <laughs> which I find interesting. This is a corpse! Ah, whatever. So I think they'll go back to their normal positioning. This is where they are normally. Obviously, normally they don't see the corpse. Then you do the noise start, and then as soon as you can, you try to climb underneath. Now, ideally, you're quick enough here to go up when they're turned away. You don't have a lot of time. It needs to be basically perfect timing. And, well, spoilers, it's not perfect timing. I do get seen. But it's only end up being like an investigate thing, so they didn't actually see me. In fact, they didn't see me at all. They only saw the corpse. So, don't think it's going to be assassin gold, but. And this one, patience waiting for the little cone of vision to move around. I kind of like this little area, like hanging beneath them and then killing them both slowly via the rope dart. Because. Come on! How do you not hear that? Someone right behind you going and dying. And they were like, I just gotta keep watching here, guys. Keep watching with the crossbow. Alright, well, got the next one now. I meant to go straight right here, but I kind of forget. Until I realize. Alright. And then the music gets real intense. It is good music in this game. I, it, it, it is. There's a, there's a lot of stuff about this game I like. But... It just falters in, in the areas where it really matters. So you'd think that Cone of Vision would actually see the corpse, but he's actually on another plane. This is also a little bit of a tricky area to um, get past. thing is, he does turn away for a long time, so you do have time to run. It's just I end up being like, do I have time? I maybe not know. Maybe I should climb. But if you look at the patrol, you see the guy on the right actually walks quite a while. And as long as he turns to the right, we time that with the same time as the other guy standing in the middle of the bridge or whatever. I don't know. Let's not say bridge. We should be okay. So wait for him to turn now. And then we wait for him to turn, which is now. And then go, 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 slide kill, slide kill, there you go, 
This little area took me a couple of attempts to figure out. I before I climbed beneath where those two guys are talking through noise starts and stuff, but apparently you didn't need to. Now, normally up here there's a shard that I wanted to get, so I would get around and go back there and kill them all, but we've got that already now, so. Shards again, it's just points anyway. And for the most part, if you get good enough levels of gold and whatever, you don't even need the shards, and you sometimes you don't even need the secondary objective to unlock things. Like on this go around, I only killed three of the four Mongolians, and I still got more than enough uh, points to unlock the reward. This is where you could go left here if you want to go back to that little area, kill some dudes and pick up that scroll. By the way, the scrolls, right? So in this mission you get at least two scrolls? I think I found two scrolls, maybe this three, I don't think so. That basically tell the story of the box. So when Xiaoyun was like done training with Ezio and left to come back here to like solve the problems in China with the Assassin's Brotherhood, uh, Ezio gave her a box and said that she should only use it once she lost her way. Uh, so for a long while she didn't use it until at one point she, you know, more or less despaired and didn't know what to do. So she opened the box and it was empty. And she never really figured out why it was empty. Wang Yang Ming, like, sort of understood that it was a... I don't want to say sacred, but like an interesting artifact or something. But Xiao Yun, no clue. But that's all about the book. That's literally all we know about the book. We never get to find that out in the game itself. That's all in the scrolls. And supplementary lore like that is really good, usually. But you can't put, like, important stuff like that in there, you know? The box is, like, a key part of the entire storyline. I mean, they keep mentioning it. Hell, later on in the game, um... Xiao Yun refers to the box as her obsession, which I don't really agree with. She really doesn't seem that obsessed. I mean, she, she's, there's a, it's a bit of a story about her being like you know, desperate for revenge, which fair enough. Yeah, I can see that, sort of. But I cannot see her really being obsessed with the box. She doesn't seem to care that much. She wants it back, obviously, but... Anyway, this little area, not much to say. <coughs> Fairly straightforward patrol patterns. Racking up the assassin gold points. It is the most fun way to play. Shadow gold can feel the most satisfying, or like you're just going shadow. But this gate has two wheels. I need to use them both. Sorry, I had to shut up there. Cause did you hear the accent there? I need to use them boat. She needs to use them boat, guys. Them boat. Like, are you serious? I'm sure someone's gonna tell me that in fact there does ex an accent like this does exist in real life. But come on, them boat. I need to use them boat. Please no. I don't understand what it is about Assassin's Creed and accents. Like for because for the most part, aside from like that weird thing in Assassin's Creed One, I mentioned this before, where Altair speaks American, despite being you know Arab. They've been pretty good with accents, but in this one, it's it's this weird mix. Of like posh English, I don't even know. Damn boat. So the key to not getting caught here is to remember to sneak underneath those little bells, and then it's easy enough. Funnily enough, you don't actually need to go here. This is not where you need to go. However, I do get a shard, so that's that's that. But you might remember we were just here, so. Well, as you remember, we need to use them boat. One on the left side, one on the right side. To raise the counterweights, I guess. I 
I like the platforming a bit. It's just very easy, you know? Not that I don't necessarily want difficulty in the platforming, I suppose, because like trying to land like really difficult jumps can mostly be annoying. I just you want it to feel cool and you want to feel awesome when you do something. I was worried here that the top guy would look down and basically see his corpse. So I'm patiently waiting to check. But he doesn't. He doesn't give a crap. So this is an easy enough kill. Okay, now I, I stand up a little bit too early, but apparently he doesn't really care. He just says Bao Zhang Lai. And then goes. Okay, I move the corpse, because just in case. Maybe when he made a noise, but no. All the guards are blind and deaf. I could probably run to kill him, but I like using the rope dart thing, so just hang around here and wait, and then stop. Number one. Honestly, ideally, I should have used the, done the left side first. You can see it's second in the list of objectives. Also, because once I've done both of them, this window opens up, and now it's not open, so I need to backtrack a bit. There is a fun way to kill these two that I don't end up doing, because I end up finding it a pretty easy way to just do it normally here. But what you can do is climb like one floor above, I guess. Especially now when they're just standing there talking. You see the little um, shiny rope thing? Right above the little platform when he's on right under now? You can stand on top of that and then destroy the rope, which then kills them. And then you can do the same for this guy. That was the third Mongolian? That should have been the fourth. But it doesn't matter. Now that window's open. That's all towards the end. This uh, Mongolian invasion thing... We didn't even see anything of that in the scrolls or anything, because the scrolls are like... Backstory. So it literally just com happens completely out of nowhere. Right after we went to see the Empress to get help. So and then we fight the guy and then like, now the Mongolian's coming. And it's, what? It's a strange thing. And here he is. We found him. Now please sneak up and kill him. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop in a standstill. And why, why are you doing that? Why? Because of course we couldn't just end him right here, right now. Anyway. Next episode will be the last.